And good morning and welcome to this, the 50th virtual bridge session. I'm glad that you're with us. Um, we're going to do our normal uh, today of a 20 minute or so print presentation and then leave 10 minutes for questions. Um, today we're going to be looking at analytics and looking at what that might mean in the new normal. It's an area with uh, much potential and one that's been coming in over the years and um, has got a journey to go. And with us, I'm pleased to say we have Kerr Gardiner, who's recently joined JISC. Not going to be selling JISC analytics offer, of course, but talking generally about what analytics might mean to you. Uh, so over to Kerr. Okay, uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah, just before I start, just uh, some of you, you might have uh, come across me before, uh, despite the accent and living in Wales, uh, until recently I was working up at uh, Glasgow University so in the Sattel area and what have you. So some of you might have come across me with the smog and the other groups. So it's, it's good to be back in Scotland, if only virtually. So I, <clears throat> I, today I'd ask you to be gentle with me because I'm literally just started at JISC. This is week four and it's been a, a, a kind of phase start. So I'm just sort of starting to learn from it. So what I'm going to do is let me just share my screen first of all. Uh, the go, 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 find the right. Uh, one, let me just uh, bear with me a second. We've all been through the fight with Zoom sharing. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It is the, just making sure I've got it actually up in the thing. Uh, share screen and there we go. Share that now. There we go. <clears throat> so, uh, See, uh, this pre presentation, it's focused on JISC because that's where I've got examples and things for it. But uh, my intention is really just to use the offerings to show what can be done with analytics and education. And particularly at this time uh, with COVID, with the lockdown, although it's being uh, easing. Uh, the, uh, I mean, first of all, with this slide, uh, what I actually find it really quite apt. Uh, right here, right now, the world's first national learning analytics service because it is actually the first uh, analytics service. Uh, we are the first one in the world to do it. And it's actually one of the reasons that I joined JISC was because uh, I've done quite a bit with analytics recently. I, but the journey that JISC are doing, it's co-created with the sector. Uh, and so it's actually been developed to, to address the needs from the outset, which I find uh, you know, it's much better than just sort of being dumped a set of uh, analytics as uh, some of the uh, suppliers do. So I'll uh, kick off with a definition uh, you of know, what actually is learning analytics. Well, the official one that uh, we use is the measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of data about learners in their context for purposes of understanding and optimizing learning and the environments in which it occurs. Uh, now within that, I mean, that, that's quite a mouthful really, but I suppose there's four main types of analytics uh, used in education. <coughs> Uh, and the, uh, as we go up the panel, uh, they get more useful. So you've got the descriptive analytics, which basically just tells you what happened. Uh, you've then got the uh, diagnostic analytics about why did it happen? And then you move into more of the foresight things. Uh, so what will happen? You've got your predictive analytics. And then the kind of golden, you know, the nirvana is how can we actually influence it? How can we make it happen? Uh, and that's your prescriptive analytics. And obviously, as you go uh, further up, you know, it gets more difficult to actually get the data and actually do the analysis. But of course, the, uh, the value goes up. So the, uh, what, here we are with uh, JISC is we're doing the descriptive analytics. We're looking, you know, doing the diagnostic. And we're also doing a bit of the predictive. And looking ahead, uh, we'll basically come up with the prescriptive ones. So that, that's kind of uh, the, the types of what, uh, what it is. Worth looking at just briefly, why, why do institutions adopt uh, learning analytics? You know, what, what's actually in it for, uh, for institutions, for uh, staff and students within it? Well, obviously, uh, you've got the retention side of things. Uh, you know, obviously, we want to make sure our students uh, keep engaging, that uh, they're going to stay in uh, the college uh, and that uh, they're going to sort of progress with their course. Uh, and, but it's also, it's not just about from the, uh, the college point of view about keeping the students there, it's also about the students themselves and about their progression and helping them to actually make the best use of their time at college, to make the best time of, uh, best use of their time uh, in their 
uh, study activities and their engagement activities uh, and all about how to actually help them uh, get the best outcomes. But, and also quite important for just now is around the well-being aspect. Uh, obviously, the sudden pivot away from uh, class-based uh, into online, it uh, already has been seen that it, uh, it, it makes more challenges for certain uh, segments of, the, uh, of society and those who are so-called like digital poverty, where they might not actually have the space uh, to actually study or to engage properly. They might not have the equipment at home. They might not have the uh, broadband at home. And uh, all these things uh, impact upon well-being. And again, with the statistics uh, and with the analytics, you can actually start to look at uh, different factors, which might actually help you help the students to uh, just be a bit more well-being. And then it's also about the curriculum insights, you know, things like how well is the, uh, the VLE getting used? How well are the tools getting used? What, what is the use of the library and so on? And so you can actually help academics uh, and uh, teaching staff to build their courses and uh, adapt them. So they're just that bit more engaging and a bit more relevant. Uh, this slide here, uh, th this is one that uh, just was used for a while and it kind of brings together those things. So you'll see on the, uh, if you can see my mouse moving, so on the left you've got the, the better uh, retention attainment. So this is the, the basic uh, level of uh, learner analytics. And some of the data, things that pulls together, the VLE data, student record data, attendance, library data, lecture capture, where that's fitted. And then as we move along from the learning analytics into the institutional and educational analytics, that becomes the higher level. They start to build the, uh, looking at uh, you know, improving the teaching, improving the curriculum, uh, bringing in the teaching quality data, assessment data, curriculum design data. And moving on as we get further up and uh, start moving into the more the cognitive analytics or the AI side of things. And this is where we can really start to influence uh, outcomes. Uh, but it is very much a journey and different uh, places, uh, different sectors at different levels of the journey. So it's like uh, helping us move along that journey. And then as a summary, you know, as we develop our analytics, because uh, I suppose one of the things to think about is that uh, colleges, uh, universities, schools all have huge amounts of data and generally it's all like kind of siphoned off, uh, you know, it's siloed off into a uh, little bits. So we don't actually really use it to the benefit of the students, the teaching staff or uh, the institution itself. And so this is all part of our journey to build more of an intelligent campus, curriculum analytics, no, again, curriculum analytics, uh, well-being analytics, and also from the student point of view, employability and apprenticeship uh, analytics, you know, how, how well can they actually get on? So that, that's a bit of background in it. I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about how it works. And then I'm also hoping, uh, I'm hoping that people are keeping an eye on the time because uh, I'm not very good at time as any of you that have heard me talk before. Just a little more. over 10 minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Uh, and I'll uh, give time for just a very quick demo, just to give you a quick view of the uh, JISC tool. So th this, uh, this slide is basically the, uh, how, how it all works. So at the bottom, you've got all the different data. Uh, and again, your VLE, self-declared data, student records, all feeds up into the learning hub, which is in effect, this, is, this level is the engine room. And so this is where the aggregation happens. It's where the prediction stuff happens. And that's all great, but it's not much good until uh, you actually can push it out. And so up at the top, we've got the uh, student app, which is the study goal, and that, that's for students. And it's available on uh, iOS and uh, Android. You've then got the staff dashboards. Uh, the, these are like web-based, much richer for uh, the staff. And then because uh, the nature of the, uh, the particular JISC offering is that uh, it's your data, you own it, so you can build in other uh, dashboards as you want. Uh, this slide here, I won't go through it in detail, but these are just some of the impacts in education, uh, some more uh, important today. And it also tries to highlight the moving from just the purely predictive into the more prescriptive side of things. So student progress, you can predict what grade, uh, and then you can uh, do the targeted in interventions. Student mental health, again, you said earlier, uh, quite, quite a big thing just now, identifying those at risk, but then prescriptive might uh, be able to be a bit more proactive for prevention uh, and therefore uh, get, get reduced cases. And so on with module delivery, curriculum design, 
uh, service delivery as well, knowing where, you know, predictive will tell you where the peaks are, but the prescriptive might actually allow you to make real-time adjustments to ease off those peaks and uh, just make things a bit easier for uh, professional service uh, delivery staff. Uh, and then you've got the institutional me uh, metrics, you know, uh, our boss is always uh, keen on uh, how well we do in the tables. So again, you know, at the minute it's quite reactive, but uh, moving into real-time adjustments with the prescriptive analytics. So lo lots of things that can actually happen uh, there. Uh, and just as a kind of quick recap uh, before I go on to the demonstration, uh, so, uh, the service tools that are available from JISC. Uh, so if you remember, we've got the hub, We've got Study Goal app, which is iOS and Android. We've got the Tutor dashboard, which is uh, Data Explorer. We've got a thing called Traffic Light Calculator, and this is using red, amber, green, just to give a very visual, quick indication of where students are. Uh, and then it's moving on to the predictive uh, analytics. So th this view here, uh, and this is because I'm quite happy, uh, this will be uh, recorded then, I'm quite happy to share the uh, presentation. This gives you one view of what people can actually see with the, uh, within the uh, Data Explorer side of things. Uh, and you can see various different aspects of uh, overall activity, the courses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, th this is all great, but let's have a quick look. Just uh, I'm just looking over at the time. Uh, let's have a quick look at what this actually means in practice. So. When, when you log on, uh, and this, this is live, so this is a uh, kind of data, so bear with me for all the challenges you get with uh, uh, doing this kind of thing. Uh, th this is, uh, when you log on, you get this dashboard and you get different tabs depending on what role you have. Uh, if you're a tutor, uh, you get to see, you can uh, dig down into just your courses, your modules, your students. Uh, the Site Explorer is the one I'll concentrate on uh, today because uh, th this allows me, because I'm not a, a tutor, this allows me to have a look at uh, what, what's actually available. So if we go down to the department course view, with this, uh, we go in, then you select the faculty. Now th this is a demo site, so there's not a lot of data in it. So uh, you use your imagination a little bit. Uh, so if we go into say uh, here, and then we find that uh, there's one department found, so physics. So what you see from this immediately is within the department, the RAG indicator, so RAG is red, amber, green. You can see whether it's uh, how many people are uh, flagged as uh, green, so they're all okay. Uh, there's a couple who are like, slightly dodgy, uh, who are amber, and then you've got two who are red flagged, uh, and they're the ones you might want to look at. And then if you delve down into uh, the department, you can then see a course. Now, obviously, because there's only one course in this one department, uh, it still get the same numbers. But you would be able then to see at a department level, you've got these uh, uh, students who are being challenged at the minute. You can then go down and see if it's a particular department uh, or a particular course rather than just a department level. Uh, and then you can uh, dig down into it. If I go back up home, uh, the, if we go into the module search, so if we search for, let's put in a B and I'll search all academic years. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, here it's found uh, three modules, biology one, two, and three. And then again, it's like a lot of these systems, you can then dig down and get more and more data. So if I go into uh, biology three, and immediately what we start to get here is a bit of data about the, uh, here it said the VLE activity by week. So you can see uh, each week what people are actually doing in it. So if you've got the downward slope all the way through, you, you might want to start thinking about, uh, is your VLE uh, uh, presence, you know, how good actually is it? Uh, maybe something's going wrong there. You can then look at it uh, on a daily basis so you can see the peaks and troughs. And if you're in a, an actual course, you would expect to see uh, the uh, saw effect, which is basically people start to engage with it more during the week, then it drops off at the weekend. And there's a whole range of things here you can uh, look at. Again, it depends what data is actually available. Uh, interestingly, if you go into the VLE tool use, so you can see here uh, you know, uh, the different tools, uh, the video, the syllabus, the list, the pages, you know, what's, what's actually being used. 
uh, and that might help you develop your course and adjust your course. And then you can also see what content's being used. So things like uh, lecture notes, reading lists, etc. And as the uh, as the time goes along, uh, because you can select dates there and times, then you can start to see. You know, you might expect your lecture notes or in reading uh, to to go up a bit uh, before an exam, say. So again, you can look at these things and start to make value judgments about your course and the style of it. Uh, if we go back, you see this, this is just a very, very quick rush through because I'm aware of the time and uh, the, I'm almost uh, into the time for the uh, questions. So again, you've got different things where you can uh, dig down through the, uh, the module search, the course search, the student search. And if you go down through, say the, I'll just do this quickly, core search, and again, go into biology, search all years, uh, and you find uh, one, one full course there, biology. And if you go into that and say your students, you can see all your students, but then you can look at the rag indicators and see the ones who are green, amber, or red. And if you see somebody that's uh, going red, uh, let's uh, take uh, House Harriet, you can then dig down into her and you can see what kind of things they've been doing. So one day, five days, you know, uh, since the last item borrowed. And from this, with uh, real data, you would then be able to see what, uh, what people are uh, doing. So it's a very powerful tool, uh, you know, analytics in general, to actually be able to see what your students are doing and to help to inform your interventions with them uh, and what, uh, what they're actually doing and how you can help them. So I shall, uh, again, looking at the time, let me just come back in, uh, blah, 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 uh, new share. I'll come back into the uh, presentation. <clears throat> so I say you've got all these different things and there are lot, lots of data there. The more data that you provide uh, as an institution, the more, uh, the richer the experience is and uh, what you can do. So I just want to finish off quickly with, uh, uh, further information, uh, just run a number of user groups, network events, developer events, etc. So, you know, do, do, if you want to sort of look into it further, you know, give it MD from just a shy or you'll know, join some of these groups. All right. The other thing is, uh, just to sort of flag up, is uh, legal and ethical is quite often a question that gets up, comes up when it comes to it. Just uh, I've worked with a number of institutions to provide a whole range of frameworks and uh, <coughs> uh, information around GDPR and consent to save you having to in effect reinvent the wheel. So again a lot of stuff is out there uh, and there's various toolkits, uh, literature reviews etc that we've uh, provided. And that is a very quick uh, 20 minute uh, run through of learner analytics. So I uh, hope that's been useful. Spot on care time wise, thank you very much. Um, well, I'll just start off with that last slide there and use a cheers prerogative to get his question in first. Uh, and that is, um, from a student perspective, it's clear that this could very much look like Big Brother is watching. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, the GIST project has dealt um, in early days with the legal and ethical side of it, but there's obviously a cultural change, I think, as well that needs to take place. Um, have we got experience around about how institutions have engaged with their student body and indeed staff to make sure that this is uh, seen as a constructive way to think uh, in addition to the toolkit of institutions? Uh, there is, uh, there has been sort of work done. There's at least one case study that I'm aware of uh, and there's, uh, there's quite a lot of information on the websites that are talking about how, how it can help. But the student perspective is really important and the analytics isn't a thing where you just switch on and say to your students, there you go. It's very much part of the dialogue between the college and the student. Uh, and so it's very much about uh, within the college, getting the students on board for it. My experience, I did some stuff. It's, I've got to be honest, I saw the thing about uh, college uh, side of things, but the, uh, my, my experience uh, is mainly within HE and I've talked to students as part of other work that I've done. And they are a mixed bag when it comes to engagement in the big brother aspect. I think the big brother aspect tends to be more with the staff, which is I find quite interesting. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Scott, there's two questions I think you've or yeah. points made there. Would you like to come off mute if you can, or would you like me just to read them out? 
Yeah, happy to come off. Yeah, I'll just, I, I mean, I've, I've asked the, the second, or, or basically made a statement on the second one there, um, just basically saying that analytics, I mean, depending on the level analytics, well, I should probably maybe step back a bit. We um, in the University of Highlands and Islands were looking to implement predictive analytics this next academic year. And uh, we've just recently made the decision to halt it. Um, and we are basically business as usual. Um, and the reason for that is, is all the ethical GDPR issues. And, and what you just mentioned there, Jason, is the um, you know stakeholder engagement with the students and the staff to make sure that you know, we don't implement it without anybody anybody in the institution having a say before we do it and to what level we do it and, and what's being done there. But I think it's important to, to highlight that analytics in themselves do not provide the entire picture of what the student situation might be. So an example would be your VLE flags up, the students not interacting. Um, they're uh, not doing their assignments they did. Well, unless you know that that student works offshore and has no internet access, yeah. unless you have that actual knowledge yourself, you might let the system make an, autom an automated decision that either the student gets a message saying, get your backside into gear or, or, or. So there's, I mean, there's just so much around the use of the analytics. Um, yeah. I, I, absolutely. If I can uh, come in there, the uh, an analytics uh, is not, you know, you shouldn't let it loose just by itself as an AI. It's nowhere near that, uh, if it ever will be. Very much in the way that uh, the places who are using the analytics already, they are using it to inform conversations. So uh, it will inform the uh, the tutor that they, there may be an issue and the tutor will then look to uh, engage with the student and the information provided by the analytics will help to inform that discussion. <clears throat> it's not about making decisions on behalf of the student because as you say, there's so many different things going on that uh, you know, it, it can't possibly you know, take all that into account. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the engagement uh, with the students and with the staff, it, yeah, very much all those things have got to get sorted out. And just to be fair, have, uh, you know, I, I've done some work before with them when I was doing some work with uh, Turnitin uh, a couple of years back. They, they have uh, got collected a lot of information, a lot of support there. So there is support there, both from GISC, but also from the sector. You know, And again, you know, even though, yes, I'm GISC, and so I'd love you to buy these products if you're buying products, but th this is just generally available to the sector, you know, all this information, all this support. So do, do make use of it, you know, because it's institutional change. You know, that, that's the main thing. I think I think the point relates back to what John Laird put in the chat there as well. He wasn't clear how it relates to the co how, what the colleges already use. So the colleges already use things like um, in their VLE, they may have you know intelligent agents as we would call them, or set up wee rules that say if the student doesn't do this, let me know, or let the student know, yeah. or do the do. do. Um, and they have a, they have a level that usually the VLE has a level of dashboard. So yeah. I think you know. So if I could just maybe answer that one, uh, the and one of the things that actually attracted me to just before I actually uh, joined them was that what just do is they they take all those different pools of uh, you know uh, analytics that are there. So VLEs have got analytics. Uh, if you use a tool like say Cortex, which is like the reading uh, the online reading uh, provision, it's got analytics. Turnitin has got analytics. Everything's got analytics, but they're all siloed. And what the JISC provision allows you to do is to pull it all together into a single data lake uh, and, and a standardized one. And then you can either use the analytics tools provided by JISC, you can get a third party, or you know you can do your own BI over it. So that, that's the beauty of it, is pulling these siloed uh, pools of data together pretty much for the first time, yeah. because no university or college I've worked in, I've worked in both universities and colleges, have ever done that. So. No, I would agree that's a really interesting yeah. uh, aspect of the analytics and that's one that, you know, very complex area as well and one that we're yeah. looking to get involved in in the future. Yeah, definitely. Great. Thanks, yeah. Kev. No. And uh, can I add, and uh, forgive my lack of technical knowledge, uh, if <clears throat> the JISC service pulls together uh, all these different uh, sources of data to, to produce it in one dashboard or one format, um, is there a cost to that service or is that one that just yeah. uh, there, there is a cost to the service. I mean, just kind of now, as you know, uh, you know, I've, I've worked in uh, universities and colleges for many years, uh, and just went through that big transformation where they had to be 
you know, start to sell the services rather than just being the subscription as it was and being the yeah. funder, which uh, I've got to be honest, I do miss getting that funding. <laughs> uh, but uh, the I don't have any sort of kind of prices at the minute. There's a thing I'd say about the colleges is there's a bit of work going on just now where uh, having a dialogue with colleges to see what colleges actually need from analytics because it is a different picture to what universities are. Uh, and you know that that's been uh, noted. And that's and as part of that work, there will come out a pricing structure. Uh, but I think the pricing structures that I've seen, it's not. It it's certainly five figures is what I'm you know what, what I've seen. But it's not uh, not not uh, you know absolutely silly money like some of the commercial uh, things that I've seen. But the again, it comes back down to why are you actually doing analytics? You know, it's not you're not buying a widget, you're actually buying institutional transformation and there will be a cost internally to actually get all the data together uh, and because when you actually start, this is the interesting thing, when you start to look at your own data you realise that none of it matches up and that's why we've always kept it siloed. So there's a lot of work to be done or there's work to be done uh, within a college, within the university to get your data sets in order and then pull it together but there can be like real value because if you lose a student, you know, it's uh, you know, if you if you use the analytics, whichever way you use it, to actually keep your students in, uh, keep your staff motivated, and all, all these other side benefits that come from it, there's actually a real benefits there. You can make a real like cost, you know, value cost case. Can, can I just can I just come back on that? Yeah. Care. Totally agree. I mean, if you lose five engineering students, even if it's a five figure sum, that's going to cover the cost of the yeah. analytics for a year. And that's not a lot of students for a, an institution to lose mm -hmm. in a year. It's, it's a half a dozen students. But what you said there is really interesting. Why are you buying into analytics? And the issue with buying into analytics is you need to ask that question at the start. Why am I buying into analytics? What is the end game for the analytics? But more importantly, what am I going to do with the information? Because if you get the information and it tells you everything's crap, you know, that people are not doing what you expect them to do, that your courses are bad, that your staff are not per performing, the, the curriculum's bad, yeah. what are you going to do? So buying, paying the five-figure sum for the analytics is one part of the, yeah. the equation, but the, uh, the bigger part of that equation is, is committing a, a resource to rectify anything that you find. Yeah. And I think that's the danger of getting into analytics with, with your eyes half open yeah. is that you get in there thinking that buying the service is, one, is, is, is it and that's going to solve all your problems. But actually that's the beginning of your problems really is that you actually start to you know, open, the, open the curtains and see what's behind. Um, so understanding absolutely. your problems often the first step, of course. And that's <laughs> yeah. And, and that, that, that's a, such an important point, Scott, that... Uh, the, I think in the early days, analytics was perhaps seen as the magic bullet. You know, just flick a switch. We've got all this data. Flick a switch, and wow, uh, we know everything. It's all rosy. It's not, and that's why I said before, it's about institutional change. And certainly, the way that uh, we go about it, and just when we go in, and uh, I did as an external uh, for JISC, uh, I went into university. Uh, university of Wales, Trinity St David's, which is an amalgamation of various colleges uh, down here in Wales. Uh, and went through the process with them and explaining to all levels, senior management, the data engineers, et cetera, everybody, uh, academic staff, uh, professional staff, exactly what it, what it means for the institution. Uh, but in a sense, th this is a journey I would actually say that I think every place needs to go on because places are going on already. And particularly with this sudden move, because uh, divert slightly a bit, uh, Universities and colleges have been patting themselves on the back for making this sudden move to online very quickly and going, oh, wow, haven't we done well? Not a lot of stuff coming out about the student experience. And what I'm seeing is the student experience is not very happy. And if you can't drill down and work out why they're not very happy, if we go into second lockdown or if we go into uh, ha having uh, you know, students, only so many students in all the uh, social distancing, uh, etc., if you know, if you don't really know what's going on there, you can't. You don't have that data. You can't dig down into it. You know, it's going to be more of a challenge. And so, you know, I think we, we are at a point now where the analytics and the use of it is going to become much more important. And the other thing, from the, uh, you know, just the whole analytics points of view, you know, a lot of uh, commercial companies have been doing it outside of education for years. 
uh, you know, the Model T Ford, you know, used analytics to just do the black, you know, any color you want, as long as it's uh, black kind of thing. It is, you know, they, they're not doing this just for the, because it sounds like a fun thing to do. They are actually seeing there can be benefits from it. But as you said, Scott, those benefits, you can't just assume that the analytics gives you those benefits automatically. They give you information that can help you make the right decisions. And with that, um, the, we were at 30 minutes, so I'm going to bring to a close the recorded part of the session. Um, if you've been watching, that's great. Uh, please do join in live if you can in future. Thank you very much. <laughs>